So first, if we have to understand R, we have to know what it does. Why is it helpful? Why is everyone suddenly talking about R? Well, in the in the age and age of analytics, we all know that we have a huge amount of data sets to deal with. We have huge amount of data sets to analyze. When it comes when it comes to analyzing data sets and uh, producing certain results, you have softwares like uh, SAS, you have softwares like SPSS, you have softwares like R, Python, W, Excel, even Excel, yes. Uh, so what, why use R and where is R standing out from all these softwares and languages? Well, when it comes to R, first of all, R is an open source platform. Uh, R was developed from the S language the, in Bell Laboratories in Auckland. It was developed by two gentlemen known as uh, Ross Yaka and Robert Gentleman. Uh, some say that R, the name R comes from their first letter, but that I'll leave that up to interpretation. Well, one thing that R has, a, has an advantage over the other softwares is mainly the, that I already uh, discussed, told about uh, is that it's open, open source. Uh, anyone and everyone can have access to it anyone and everyone can develop uh, you know, develop uh, uh, tools on R uh, there's no restriction on that uh, you have a central R archive network called CRAN uh, people uh, upload their, their their work on R over there and if it gets approved uh, you have uh, you can have access to them and you can work with them these small things are known as packages now when i'm talking about softwares like sas spss they they come they're not open source you have to pay lot, loads of money for them and when you get them everything is within that software the software is about the sas 9.4 so software that is the latest it, it's something around 16 to 18 gb so an R in, in that case is ATMB. So where is that gap? Where is that gap going? Where is where is that amount of information going? That amount of information is stored in something we call CRAN, the Central R Archive Network. CRAN houses different packages. Now these packages contain functions and data sets that you can call upon and you can use to uh, analyze your data set. See, R is a language. SAS, SPSS, these are not languages, these are tools. On the other hand, R is a language. So in a language, you have to write everything from scratch. So we have to develop functions from scratch. Always it is not it is not possible for everyone, especially people from statistical background who are not that well versed in coding. It's not possible for them to develop packages. Uh, sorry, to de uh, develop uh, codes in R. For that reason, we have uh that uh, archive where people who are capable develop those codes upload those functions and if they are approved they are available for everyone to download for downloading and use it what we require is not uh, is not how the code has been done what we require is the is the ultimate result and that of course that the code is right now, R has different platforms upon which you can work. The most famous is uh, what I'm going to show you right now. This uh, window that you're seeing over here, this is known as the R Studio. The R Studio is just a user interface for, uh, for, uh, for doing R. For uh, invoking the language of R, this console window over here is what runs R in the background. This window over here, this is known as the script window. The script window is where you write your codes that you can execute later. Um, the other windows that we have over here, the environment and history window. The environment window houses all your op all your uh, all your objects and variables that you create in R, which we are going to discuss. The history window houses each and every code that you have written uh, previously. So you can easily refer to your codes in the history window. 
then you have the concatenated windows the concatenated windows over here are file plots packages help and viewer the file tab over here this gives access to your windows uh, or, or your operating system whatever it may be mac os r runs on mac and os ubuntu also so uh, this is the directory where r is uh, presently connected with your operating system you can change that obviously the next uh, tab over here is the plot tab the plot tab obviously shows your uh, visualization that you get through your coding r is one of the soft one of the best softwares there is for visualization the amount and the array of visualization that you can achieve with r is above uh, that of any paid softwares out there the next tab that you see over here is the most important of these it's known as packages the packages tab is taking a bit of time loading but anyways yeah now it's loaded the packages tab houses different packages now as i said packages are uh, you can call them a combination of functions and data sets that are uh, you know useful to us for uh, performing different analytical or different analytical, analytical purposes these packages over here helps us to achieve a lot of things with ease if you have to install any packages whatsoever you can just simply click on install and you can check from the repository cran and you can just write your package name so you can write any package name over here uh, and as soon as i click on install that packages that package gets installed you can even uh, choose where you want to install your packages but i recommend that leave it as it is as r would uh, as you would need to specify if you change the uh, the path you will need to specify that again and again and again okay the help is for me one of the one of the best guide that i can have in r since r is open source uh, you do not get any kind of formal documentation this is however the form uh, as close as, as you can get to the formal documentation of r so refer to help go over here explore search it will help you help will i <laughs> help will help you in every way possible the viewer tab is for advanced plotting which will be coming to later now that we have gone through the introduction of tabs one thing uh, that i would like to discuss now is how does the r language work r let me make one thing clear first r is an object oriented language what is an object oriented language an object oriented language is such a language in which you create objects so suppose i create an object over here x say so assign it a value 5 this is known as the assignment operator assign it a value 5 and then execute it to execute a line of code in r you can either use this run or you can use the keyboard shortcut control r or control enter so i prefer control r you can do you can take either of the three ways so coming back to the topic r is an object oriented language so you create objects in r you perform, perform operations on those objects in r the different types of objects that will get in r will be vector matrix array list data frame a vector is as we know a one dimensional uh, uh, arrangement of elements matrix is two dimensional array is higher dimensional um, then you have your list a list is somewhat new to us in the sense that it's not mathematical unlike uh, you know vector array and matrix a list is think of it as a normal list so what do you get in a list you you get uh, objects which come one after another in a vertical format that is exactly what list is in R. you can save several objects one after another in a list no matter what the objects are the last uh, object that i'm going to mention uh, in r will be a data frame now what is a data frame 
A data frame is nothing but an arrangement of information in rows and columns which are labeled. So it is nothing but a term given to data sets. So a data frame uh, is actually a data sets which, uh, which is known by a different name is R. Now R being a language offers so much more than any other paid software out there uh, in terms of data manipulation data cleaning. If you're talking about softwares like SAS, SPSS, there's not much that you can do with uh, SAS, do with a data manipulation and cleaning in SAS or in SPSS. There's always a limitation because those are not object oriented languages. You cannot refer to a certain of, you cannot refer to a certain point with the data set in SAS or in uh, um, or in SPSS. So R gives you that benefit. R gives you that added extra benefit that you can uh, that you can use in data manipulation, data extracting. Even there's a function called edit. Edit is something like it's similar to Excel. You can op uh, edit opens up. So I'm going to just show you something. Uh, if I write the function edit over here and I write the name of any data set or some inbuilt data set say air quality is one of the inbuilt data sets in R if you want to take a look at the inbuilt data sets in R what you can do is you can write the data set data set and you can take a look at all these inbuilt data sets in uh, sorry in R if I run this uh, edit function one important thing is that R uh, executes each line of coding separately if they're not enclosed in a parenthesis. So if I run this edit, uh, nothing else will be uh, executed except this line, just this line. So if I run this, it, it opens up a, a, a dialog box which will let me edit each and every value over here. If I want, I can change this from uh, from 118 to 117, and that's that's going to work. Of course, I would have I would have had to save this in an object for the changes to take place. But you can see what uh, flexibility R provides. Now, this flexibility will not be provided to you by any other software, and we here at Text Lab strive to teach you that flexibility with data sets that you can use now a few things about uh, how r treats a data set i must uh, address over here so as we know that variables can be of two types broadly speaking so uh, character and numeric a character variable is any string variable a numeric variable is something which contains numbers well, to R, a numeric variable can either be a new NUM, numeric, or INT, integer. So, to check the uh, different types, to check how R treats a variable differently, you can run a function. You can run a function called str to check the structure of a data. So, let's deal with air quality only since we are familiar with the data set. So I can see over here that R is uh, treating ozone as an integer given by int. Now for R, integer and number num is different. Integer are those values which cannot take decimal points or which are not continuous, which are discrete. Now numeric or num are those uh, variables which are continuous, which can take any value between two intervals. So this uh, does it for your um numeric variable types when it comes to character variable types what uh, what i would like to mention is of course you have your string you have your string you have your character like for example if i check the str of another data set called empty cars it's information it's information about cars i would see that okay everything is numeric over here uh, i could just change this empty cars to iris the famous iris data set i would see over here that uh, length is obviously numeric width is numeric uh, petal uh, length is numeric petal width is numeric all these values that you're getting over here are the first few values of the uh, of the observations uh, of the variables that you have now 
it's it's very important to uh, it's very important to analyze this this output that R is giving us. R is telling us that this object is a data frame which contains 150 observations. Now observations are the same thing as records. They are rows. They contain it contains 150 rows along with five variables. And these are the variables: the sepal dot length, sepal dot width, petal dot length, petal dot width, and species. Out of which sepal dot length, sepal dot width, sepal dot width, petal dot length, petal dot width are all numeric. Species is something which is known as a factor. Now this is new to us. Factor is something which R recognizes as a categorical variable, be it character or be it numeric. If we can just view the data set with the function known as view iris you can see over here that although the first four variables are numeric the last variable is character but r is not treating that as a character just a character it's treating that as a factor so r automatically recognizes variables which are categorical in nature Every time, uh, now this is a fair warning to everybody that every time R will not recognize uh, perfectly the variable types. Sometimes you have to change the variable types, which you can also do. So that that again uh, talks about the flexibility of uh, R as a language. One more thing that I would like to mention in, in just in between is that R has a has a relatively steeper learning curve than python python is obviously very similar a very similar language to r it is also used in data analytics especially in machine learning uh, r uh, learning curve is a bit steeper than python python is a, is a bit uh, it's a bit smoother but nevertheless r uh, you can learn either of them both of them are being heavily used in the industry as well as in the research field Okay, now I had touched on this topic uh, before mm, that data manipulation and restructuring. Data manipulation and restructuring is nothing but what I had just said that if R does not recognize a variable type by default, you must change it. So you must change the structure. You must, you must restructure the data to fit your analytical needs. Now, data manipulation is not data tampering. We at analytics refer to manipulation differently than what people outside of analytics might refer it to. Manipulation is not tampering. Tampering is when you're changing the values of the data uh, to fit your own needs. Manipulation is when you're restructuring the data to fit your analytical needs, not necessarily changing the variable or the variable types or the values. So uh, R basically there's a grammar. So in R, there's something known as the grammar of data manipulation and data restructuring known as uh, TIDR and DPLYR. Now this TIDR and DPLYR are two packages. These are the most essential, I would say, the most essential packages in R, DPLY and TIDR. They would, uh, they would be handy to anyone who's using R for any purpose whatsoever. At some point of time or the other, that person has to invoke the package DPLY and TIDR. So that these these two are very different, uh, very important uh, packages that helps us to manipulate data. So you have the functions like filter sorting mutate which creates new variables uh, arrange um, select which selects variables from data sets so each and every functions joins which merge which uh, combines data sets and uh, in tidy you have uh, gathered uh, separate using which you can convert variables to observations observations to variables you know transposing data sets all those sort of things so each and every restructuring of data is taken care of by TIDR. Each and every data cleaning purposes, so imputing missing values, uh, you know, sort arranging uh, variables, taking care of uh, wrongly specified variables, creating new variables, all these things are taken care of by DPLY. Now, since I've mentioned missing values, it's very important to know how R uh, defines a missing value. A missing value is where your information is not available. 
the uh, row where the variable information is not available. R defines that as NA, NA not available. So if you remember, if I can just show you the uh, data air quality again, let's view the data air quality. You can see over here that you get NAs over here. Okay, these NAs are nothing but missing values. Okay, now moving on to the next topic, R visualization. So R visualization, the most three most important things that we uh, here at DexLab teach you about R visualization are uh, plot, Q plot, GG plot, um, lattice. So th these four uh, things are the most important. Out of which plot, Q plot, and GG plot are three functions. Plot is uh, there in the base package, base R package. You do not have to uh, download any extra package for the function plot. The function Q plot is in the package ggplot2 as well as the function ggplot that is also in the package ggplot2. Now ggplot2 is used for advanced plotting. Everything that you can do with qplot you can also do with ggplot. The difference is graphical. Graphical graphically ggplot is much better and uh, it gives a bit more flexibility than qplot. A bit more flexibility. There are few things, few few things which might seem trivial to you that we can do in ggplot but not in qplot. Lattice, uh, the package is very important because with lattice we get a very important function known as the scatter for uh, constructing the scatter plot matrix. So, uh, and there are other functions uh, in lattice as well. We can draw a 3D, uh, a 3D uh, scatter plot, and we can have hyper hyper planes uh, in scatter plot as well with the package lattice. Uh, so R visualization, uh, you can, you know, you can spend years after years and you won't finish R visualization completely because each and every day new packages are being developed, new functions are being developed, new uh, codes are being developed, which helps us to visualize data much more effectively. See, at the end of the day, you have to make people understand through visualization human brains are not suited to look at a uh, huge uh, huge uh, data sets uh, consisting of numbers and characters and then understanding them. we perform much better when the data is visualized to us so it's very important our visualization the next topic that i'm going to talk about uh, that we cover in our course are loops and user defined functions the reason why I kept these two together is because of a very simple thing. Not everything that you are trying to do in R will be provided to you through a function or a package. Let me make that very clear. Suppose you want to you want to do something as simple as suppose you have four variables. Suppose here only you have four variables in sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and all four variables have some missing values so suppose wherever they have missing values i want to impute them by their average now this thing is not provided uh, by this functionality is not provided by any any you know any packages or any function you have to create a function by yourself so over there the user defined function comes into play you can uh, you can create functions you can uh, create loops which will help your function uh, uh, to work or to perform the things that you want to do. Uh, as usual in loops we have the basic if then else for do while for next uh, all those loops in user defined function we just define a function we define an object say suppose function one function sorry Let's define an object called fn. Let's give an argument to the function x. And let's say here I'll write uh, uh, what the function 
will do okay so one more thing that i would like to mention over here is that if you're writing something like this just comment out your written script so, so you use the comment to uh, specify to r uh, that this is not a code this is something which i've written in the code to just to explain or just to help me understand what the code is doing please do not execute them treat them as simple string okay so obviously uh, you will uh, be finding yourself creating functions for uh, you know uh, for dealing with certain uh, challenges uh, we here at text lab invest much time in teaching you loops and functions so that you're absolutely clear about the concepts see these are conceptual things once you're clear about them you can do anything and everything with them so these functions are indeed very important the next thing we are coming to is the advanced side of things where you where i'll be talking about uh, sql in r uh, data scraping in r here at dexlab analytics we uh, extensively teach you how to extract data from wikipedia from any web any other websites which which of course allow you to extract data legally and uh, from imdb from websites like this how to create a data frame suppose you want to create a data frame of say 50 top movies their ratings their direct names uh, top uh, reviews something like this we teach you to uh, perform those functions as well uh, of course data scraping is an area where you'll be using loops and function extensively sql in r is again uh, using invoking sql in r sql is what you use to uh, you know connect your r with databases with uh, servers and then extract data from there and manipulate and do whatever you want the sql language itself is uh, is uh, a, it's a cross from platform language in this in the sense that you can use it in other languages as well oh, the concept will stay the same in other languages the just, just the functions might differ might differ a bit after this after this this course is completed in uh, 10 12 days what we'll be doing is we'll be moving to the analytics section over in, in the analytics section we'll be talking about um, you know different kind of uh, modeling techniques we will be taking and taking you through the basics of statistics first the basics of analytics first how are the concepts built up how are the, how have the concepts come to be what are the concepts used for then we'll be applying those concepts on data sets to get uh, valuable uh, information like we'll be talking about regression we'll be talking about decision trees we'll be talking about <coughs> logistic regression we'll be talking about classification uh, that will be coming up that will will be venturing a bit into machine learning but not totally into machine learning as that is not the that's not the purpose of this course uh, but a bit of machine learning will be covered yes in terms of k-means uh, clustering techniques as uh, uh, they're important they're very important as well so uh, time series analysis uh, factor analysis all these things will be covered over here so it's a, it's a complete package in where we'll tell you how to uh, extract information such that your business or your uh, or, or your da daily uh, requirements uh, some uh, useful information are extracted over there so uh, that's all uh,